So welcome to this short video on the suprahyoids. In this particular video, we're going to go through the four muscles of the, the suprahyoids, their attachments, their nerve innervations, and their actions. So the suprahyoid, supra, above, hyoid bone. So here's the hyoid bone here. So these muscles are essentially located above the hyoid. They're going to originate either in the mandible, which is the bone of the jaw, and then the, the base of the skull here. So what are they going to do is essentially either elevate the hyoid or retract it, or when the hyoid is fixed, help to depress or drop down the mandible. These groups of muscles are located between the superficial group of the neck, so that's the platysma and the sternocleidomastoid, and the deeper group in the closer to the vertebra. So this, this group of muscles, there's four muscles that you need to know. There's the digastrix, there's the stylohyoid, there's the mylohyoid, and the geniohyoid. So let's go through one at a time. Starting with this image, so we can see the mandible here with the teeth of the lower jaw. Here we've got the, the lower part of the skull, so this would be a zygomatic process going into the temporal bone. This is the external acoustic meatus, and coming down here is the pilla, which is the styloid, and then we have the mastoid process here. Down here in black is the hyoid bone. An important thing just to be aware of before we begin, these group of muscles, three out of four, come out of the pharyngeal arches, so it's important that you refresh your knowledge with the pharyngeal arch. We've done a video on this, so please watch that video on the pharyngeal arch to get the most of this. So three out of four come out of either the first or second pharyngeal arch, and the fourth muscle, which is the geniohyoid, that's probably more of a strap muscle, which we saw with the infrahyoids, so that has a kind of a slightly different nerve innovation. So let's start with the digastrics. This is this muscle and this muscle here. So di means two, gastric means belly. So this particular muscle has two bellies to it, a posterior and an anterior belly. Okay, we'll start with the posterior. So this is coming off the mastoid process. So just around the corner a bit is a process or a notch called the digastric notch. And this belly will run posteriorly, well, sorry, from this part, it's was going to run actually anteriorly, inferiorly, so it's running down like so. And as we get down towards the hyoid, more specifically the lesser horn of the hyoid, we have this intermediate tendon, which you actually can't see here. But it's a tendon that is continuous and going up in the anterior. Now, it runs through a tunnel, kind of a fibrous sling tunnel, which is kind of straddled by the stylohyoid, which we get to, but that tunnel allows like almost like a pulley effect for the posterior to go into the anterior. So the insertion of the posterior digastric is essentially an intermediate tendon. And so therefore the insertion of the anterior digastric is going to be that intermediate tendon and it's going to be running forward. Now it's running anterior superiorly over the top of the mylohyoid, which we'll get to, where it inserts into the digastric fossa and the front part of your chin on the inside. So this particular muscle, it comes out of two arches. The anterior comes out of the first pharyngeal arch, so it must be a branch of V3 or the trigeminal nerve, whereas the posterior comes out of the second arch, so it's going to be a facial nerve. Now in terms of what it does, well, it's going to help depress the mandible, so when it's, um, when it's acting, it's going to depress down, but also retract so it's going to pull back the mandible. So it's probably going to help a bit to open the jaw, particularly working with the lateral pterygoids as an opener of the jaw. Now, just to finalize the, insert, uh, the, the nerve innervation, because you've got a nerve coming through here at the stylomastoid foramen, which is important for the facial nerve, this is going to be a branch to both this one and this one, which we're going to get to now. So the posterior belly of the digastric is going to get a branch of the facial, whereas the anterior has a mylohyoid branch, which comes off the anterior portion of the um, V3, which is trigeminal nerve. So that's going to be innovating that. Now moving to the next muscle. So this is going to be the stylohyoid. So this muscle originates at the styloid process of the temporal bone, and it's going to run down where it inserts, but kind of bifurcates and straddles over that. Um, fibrous sling, so it kind of goes on either side like so. 
What it will do is it will act solely on the hyoid, so it's going to elevate but also help to retract the hyoid, which is going to be important within swallowing. Now, in terms of the nerve innervation, we've already said essentially it will get the same branch as we saw with the posterior digastric, so that's a branch of the facial nerve. Finally, before we turn it over and have a look at another image, we've got the third muscle, which is the mylohyoid muscle, which you can see just sits behind the um, anterior velar digastric. So the, the mylohyoid is essentially the floor or the diaphragm of the mouth. It's coming from the anterior part of the hyoid bone and it's going to go up where it kind of connects to this line. This is called the mylohyoid line of the mandible. Now it's going to continue all the way back probably to the third level of the third molar and this is why it's got the name mylohyoid. Milo meaning molar. So this particular muscle will help to form a platform for the tongue and assist with um, the first phase of swallowing. But I'm going to turn over and show you another diagram. So what we've got here is the base of the mandible. So we're looking up underneath like here. Here is the hyoid bone, which you can just see the anterior front surface of it. Down here are the strap muscles, so this is going to be the sternohyoid and then the thyrohyoid, etc. The top, this is the notch of the thyroid cartilage and here is the hyoid. Now what you can see on this side, here's the anterior belly, the digastric, going through the sling up to the posterior and coming down here is the stylohyoid, straddling the tendon there. Looking behind the anterior belly digastric, you can see the mylohyoid there. So that, that's running in this plane. So at least the two-third the two -third portion of the mylohyoid is actually running forward into this raffe, like so. And you'd actually have the other one coming across like so, but I've removed that off so you can see the fourth muscle. So the mylohyoid, the two mylohyoids coming together form the the platform or the base of the floor. So when it contracts, it actually shallows the, the way that the tongue sits on it. So it kind of pushes your mouth upwards, which allows your tongue to rise, which is important for the first phase of swallowing, but also gives you a platform to stick out your tongue. So that's the main action of the mylohyoid. The mylohyoid is out of the first pharyngeal arch, so it's going to get a branch of the trigeminal nerve, the same one as we saw for the anterior belly, the digastric, and that's actually innervated by the mylohyoid nerve. The final and fourth, or fourth and final muscle of the suprahyoids is this one right here. So it's actually hidden behind the mylohyoids, so I've actually had to remove that side away, and you can see it's sitting by here. So it's, um, it attaches on the inside, so this is the anterior part of your jaw or your mandible. So just on the inside of it there is kind of a mental spine, so it will attach here and come forward and attach onto the hyoid bone. So it's going to play kind of two, two functions here. It will, when the hyoid is uh, fixed by the infrahyoid, so it's nice and fixed there, it will allow you to depress your mandible down. But when it's um, allowed to be moved, uh, and this and the, the mandible is a platform, it will pull the hyoid up and retract it actually backwards. So it's going to actually uh, antagonize the effect of the stylohyoid, which is this one. So the stylohyoid will, will elevate and pull back. This one's going to push forward and go up. So that's the genio, geniohyoid, and its, its nerve innervation is basically the same as the infrahyoids, particularly um, C1. So this is a branch out of the hypoglossal, hypoglossal nerve. Genio means chin, so it's the going from the chin to the hyoid. So that's the four muscles of the suprahyoids. We've got the digastrics, the stylohyoids, the mylohyoid, and then the geniohyoid. We've gone through where they're attached, what are their nerve innervations, and they're different, slightly different actions, but essentially, as a whole, they will help to elevate the hyoid, particularly for speech and for swallowing.